Hi everyone, this is Jeff P. It is May 27, 2019, and I have some cool stuff for you today, and you will not be disappointed, and I'm just going to dive right into it. I haven't made any videos lately, and that is because I have been doing some serious, deep research on some leaked UFO patents, two of them, and breaking it down. I had to read through the document and research some of it. And I've I got some cool stuff. I'm going to put it all together for you. But before I do that, I actually captured this today in today's sky. I saw I was looking up and many of us have seen these triangular crafts in the sky, straight edges. Kind of like we see here in this. We saw, I was looking straight. There's just something not right with the clouds coming over my sky. And I looked up and there is this cloud here in the sky that basically stood above me for hours not moving with the wind while the ones that did above it did there was something about it wasn't right i didn't seem to be killier but i took my own advice grabbed my iphone 7 captured it on video in slow motion mode now with an iphone 7 it captures videos 60 frames per second because I was trying to catch some crafts that are moving at the speed of light. At 60 frames per second, I would maybe catch a single snapshot. But I was because it was in slow motion mode, I was able to see this thing travel completely slowly, frame by frame, all the way across the sky. This cloud was hovering above me at 300 feet. I know that it was closely 300 feet because I fly a drone this altitude all the time. N in up to and through the clouds because the G the remote control tells me I'm at 300 feet and I know this thing would have been a little spot in the sky. Now this was a tiny drone ship that would flow underneath, and I say that the altitude of this cloud was 300 feet, and I see crash flying all the time near this altitude, police helicopters and everything else. This thing was a very very low cloud that wasn't moving. Now, I'm going to play the camera I'm recording now in slow motion mode, but for a couple of seconds, it records at normal speed, and then it suddenly shifts mode into slow motion at 256 frames per second. Notice during the time that the clouds above it are actually moving quite fast. You can see the motion of the clouds. When it shifts into slow motion mode, all this basically stops in comparison to the speed of the camera. And it's going to go into the mode any second. And sound too. You can hear the birds chirping in the background. Now it's in slow motion mode. And it continues in slow motion mode throughout the rest of the video. But for time's sake, I'm going to skip forward to roughly 4 minutes and 30 seconds. And believe me, I did not see. I just sat there boringly watching this thing with my slow motion camera, having faith that I'm going to see something when I review it in my high-speed camera. And I was not disappointed. There it is. Did you see that? Right there. No wings flapping. No contrails. No nothing. No sound. Absolutely nothing. And look how it zips across the sky. <laughs> wow. Let's watch that again. Now that's just 200. I'm going to that it, it's already in slow motion. To have something go fat fast across the sky couldn't be anything. I mean, even a aircraft jets at 3 that that was probably like 250 feet right here. Okay? Now I'm going to slow this down even more. At 1 quarter speed. And still Zips across the sky. You tell me what craft can go across the entire field of view in under a single second. 
Watch this again. No, it's not an ins. I don't. Not even an There's nothing that could travel that fast. No insect. Even if it was right in front of my cell phone. Clearly, this is up above at the near the altitude of the cloud. What's exciting about this is that you can catch this yourself. Just get out your iPhone when these fake clouds come overhead and you can post these videos and I'll gladly repost it right here on the Jeff B channel. They have to travel fast. Of course they do because they wouldn't look obvious and be sneaky about it because we was like, hey, what is a slow craft doing circles around a bigger craft for? That doesn't make any sense. Unless it's like scanning everything, picking up IP addresses, doing IR signatures of the Earth. Who knows? Things that like recon. And it's pretty mundane. These things are extremely high speeds. There it is. Watch how it flies at a very high altitude. Well, above the trees, not an insect, going in a very straight line. I mean... That's a UFO, folks. Well, it's unidentified, right? I know it's government designed. All right. We had enough fun with that. Let's dive into the patent. This is where, this is the released patent. Here you go. United States Patent Application Publication Patent Number US 2018-0229-8641-A1. Hmm. Published it in 2018. I'm going to read this. A high-frequency gravitational wave generator, including a gas-filled shell with an outer shell surface, microwave emitters, sound generators, <laughs> an acoustic vibration, resonant gas-filled cavities. The outer shell surface is electrically charged and vibrated by microwave emitters to generate the first electromagnetic field. The acoustic vibration resonant gas-filled cavities each have a cavity that can be electrically charged and vibrated by acoustic energy from the sound generators that is the second electromagnetic field that is generated. That's these two, by the way. I'm going to get into this real quick. Okay. So the two acoustic vibration resonant gas cavities able to... <clears throat> counter spin relative to each other for stability. Well, okay, so because this is rotating clockwise or counterclockwise, and this is count, this was the opposite direction. The reason why it's stability, what they mean by that, if this was the only direction something spun inside of something, then the entire craft spins with it. Kind of like a helicopter with its blade spinning without a back propeller to keep it stabilized from spinning with the direction of the spinning blades. So if this one spins in the opposite direction, then this outer shell stays the same. This is the shell that we see here. Figure 400 is the microwave emitters. Just this is the shell cavity inside. The inside is charged and it's an inert gas that's charged. The shell is made with something what's called a surmet, which is a metallic ceramic metal and i'm going to touch on that too why a ceramic metal because it conducts electricity and look at this figure here 16 and 700 is the superconductor that's really cool now we've been told about room temperature superconductors and here it is they figured it out what's the secret how could they have something so incredibly 10 billion watts of power going through this thing and yet still conducts electricity it doesn't overheat with vibrational energy and i'll get into that so the sound resonators the first resonation cavity is generate the first wave is generated by the whole outer shell i will dive into further detail the secondary wave is from these two cavities here this triangular asymmetric cavity these two 200 here these little square things are the sound generators got to be at least two of them that vibrate against the surface of this surface here and these two against this surface here because they're different shapes it's asymmetrical and we're going to get this 
figure 500 is the basically the battery. Now some, it could be an antimattery battery or element 114. Bob Lazar touched on this topic. Um, 114 is unitonium. And they charge it up, it becomes element 116. And it as it discharges, and it's a thermal reaction, it's kind of complex. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's dive into what, what why blows my mind is, hey, the superconductor, for example. Look at this. This is the superconductor. 900. This is the wire. This is a breakdown voltage across this current wire. And along the path of the wire are resonators. And we're going to get into that. They could be LED diodes or microwave frequency waves that resonate with the wire to make it a superconductor. So further down this patent, a high frequency gravitational wave generator includes a gas filled shell, at least two sound generators for generating sound and two acoustic resonating gas filled cavities. So the outer shell generates a wave, the inner two circulating triangles generate a wave. They both as one transitions in front of an, uh, the the first wave, as the second wave transitions or propagates through the second wave, it creates a high gra high frequency gravitational wave generator. I know it's a mouthful. Please, I'm going to try and simplify this for those that think this is over your head. Uh, this is going to be really cool because it's just all waves, really. Okay, never mind the mumbo jumbo in this. So the first wave is being generated by the electric current on this. All electric current has a wave. And because it's a microwave, it actually is a wave. It's not static DC current. So the second wave is created by the sound of these two things. Let me give you a little demonstration of kind of how these are generating waves. Okay, so the reason why we need two waves is in like the double slit experiment, we talked about this wave generation at the same frequency. Think of these two things are on the, on the plane of that field generating this wave. Okay. So you have two resonant same frequency waves on one plane. And the other two on the other. So think of these little tennis balls he's got in the water. Like we see them. One tennis ball here and one tennis ball. These resonant waves are creating a wave that's waving up and down. And then you got another two resonant waves here. They react with one another, creating a secondary wave that propagates this way. And because the whole thing's resonating, this is resonating also. It's... According to the scientific papers that were kind of lightly touched on, because these are asymmetrical sound waves that propagate. Okay, the word propagate, I'm not trying to be overheads on this, but that's actually in this paper. Propagate is just another term for to multiply and, and to transition. It's like propagate just like in that little video. These waves are being you have a small wave propagating into bigger and bigger waves you're multiplying the size of the wave not only that but in this video because you've got two waves of the same wave when they interact with each other it actually creates a larger wave because they're coherent so it's wave amplification and so and that's basically what they're doing is amplifying gravity by amplifying the wave of the existing mass of the craft itself. Yeah, I know it's a little heavy. <laughs> but I use this illustration because this is what's happening to the surface of this patent here. And that's kind of what's happening here with this this superconductor. Now let me touch on that one. That's really cool, this superconductor. Okay, so the first part is it is a feature of the invention to provide a high frequency gravitational wave generator 
that can be used for advanced propulsion for asteroid disruption. Yeah, they got to say that, right? They're not going to say it for, like, cloud and pl blocking Planet X. They're going to look like, oh, we're here to defend you, right? And deflecting uh, communications through solid objects. Yeah, okay, that's a real purpose. Its feature invention is to provide a high-frequency gravitational wave generator, which utilizes the means of enabling a room temperature conductivity in the special composite metal wiring. There you go. A room temperature superconductor. How long have been waiting for that to happen? Okay, so let me skip down the la near the last page. Shows the non-mechanical version of this idea by whereby the wiring, or 700, is a room temperature superconducting wire, 900, is abruptly pulsed with electromagnetic EM radiation from electromagnetic radiation sources. That was those little nodules on top of the wire, back here. Okay. Nodules, or I'm going to call them nodules. These are little acoustic things that sit along the course of this wire as, a, as or electrons, whatever you want to call it, a pressure waves going back and forth through this wire. That's what voltage really is. Even the electromechanical engineers will know that voltage is, is what they describe as pressure. Water pressure, right? <laughs> okay, so the electromagnetic and voltage is water pressure. Well, anyways, <clears throat> I don't want to get into that right now. Electromagnetic radiation source may be without limitation by optically pumped diodes, microwave emitters, or Clyson tubes, which is a form of a microwave, by the way. Preferred embodiment room temperature superconducting wire has a non-time dependent current running through it radiation sources. Now, without boring more, let's jump to the next. Okay, with all that being said, so we've got basically a bunch of wave generators. And, okay, number one, a high-frequency, or HF, G, w, w, G, high-frequency gravitational wave generator, a glass-filled shell, at least two sound generators for generating sound, like I showed you in that description, two acoustic gas-resonant-filled cavities, that's, this is, uh, there's your cavities, but there's two of them, counter-rotate, one, two, right, so those things, these things are vibrating like that water in the pond, and they're in counter spin of each other to keep the whole thing stable. Otherwise, the entire craft will spin with the direction of the one. You have to have something counter spinning it. Hmm. Kind of reminds of the CERN Hadron Collider. They got two different directions. Uh, I wonder what happened if they didn't have it both directions. Maybe the whole Earth would change rotation. Huh. Okay, so. Two gas filled sound generators for generating sound, two acoustic resonant filled cavities. Two gas filled shells include microwave emitters for generating electromagnetic fields. Remember, when we say electromagnetic field, those are pulsing magnetic fields and they create wave fields. The glass filled shell 100 has an outer shell and an inner shell surface. The outer shell surface 105 is able to electrically charged. Okay, it's kind of boring here. Here, at least two sound generators are deposed within the gas-filled shell. Those little triangular things. There's two of them because you have to have that. It takes two to make the second one amplify. If you just had one, there'd be no application of sound. You could have two or more, but at least two. The propagation of sound this is just multiplication of sound created by the two sound generators because it starts with a sound and it amplifies as it passes through the outer shell. The two acoustic vibration resonant gas-filled cavities are disposed within the shell. It's one cavity surface that can be electrically charged. When I see it, I'm trying to make it fun and entertaining because this is kind of deep and I spent a lot of time on this, so I'm sorry. The electrical power source 500 this is what I said was probably L114 or an anti-gravity battery. And so let's see if I can pull up a little information. Here's some uh, other stuff that we I was working on too. Antimatter batteries. This was proposed uh, in fall of 2018. 
and I'm going to touch on this topic. It's it's too deep, and we've already spent enough time on this previous video, antimatter batteries. So I'm just talking about uh, the Space Force has actually created these, by the way, putting antimatter or inside a very tiny amount of antimatter inside these tiny little shells. And I'm going to touch on that later. But here is it, 90 proposed. And they actually can put these antimatter. Uh, this is another topic. But by putting antimatter in a tiny nano chamber and with its own power source that creates a temporary magnetic field, I think it lasts for two weeks. I'm not sure. But it has its own magnetic field. They can't be easily cracked at the right angle. You can crack these things open and it forms an atomic bomb which releases 100% of its potential energy, unlike Hiroshima bomb, which wasted 90% of its efficiency. Because if that thing was 100% efficient, it would have leveled like the entire island. And now they can put that kind of explosive technology in tiny object. 100% efficiency. Yeah, I know, antimatter, it's almost the same thing. Let's go back to Sir Metz. This is pretty cool because this is what the outer shell is consisted of, of this patented idea. In this, the outer shell, is this, I keep talking about the outer shell. This is the tighter outer spacecraft. Inside the shell is these microwave emitters that emit microwave energy into an inert gas such as argon and turns it into plasma and resonates a sound and this resonates through pro when this sound asymmetric sound propagates through this you get the high gravity waves so back to the surmet which this outer shell is constructed of surmet is a ceramic metal right that's how you get the name Basically, they're able to fuse metal with any kind of metal, with any kind of ceramic, taking the nature of two. Electric components are an obvious application because they get extremely hot and behave like ceramics. And there's many examples of these ceramics. Uh, one of the natures of this is it basically is conductive. And according to the patent, that if they take a semi-radioactive metal and fuse it into a cermet or a ceramic metal composite material. In fact, I bought a frying pan that was made of titanium ceramics. It had all the strength and heat resistance of ceramic, and yet the all the other nature of titanium. And that's just today's frying pans that's leaked out. So I've already been talking about this topic for over 23 minutes. And I know some of you think it's over your head, but I am think it's kind of amazing I, that they were able to create a room temperature superconductor. And knowing that I thought it was kind of cool that the gas-filled shells, when filled with an inert gas, the high frequency gravitational wave generator claim is filled with like xenon, the high frequency gra gravity wave generator of the claim, the acoustic incongruent wedges. What? Excuse me. Oh, I guess that's the end of it. Well, I think I went over your, uh, some people's heads on this and it went over my time and I hope to catch up on my next video on this. There's so much science into this. You could just stop on one sentence like gravitational waves. I know there's no gravity. Please don't make comments that there's no gravity. I get it. And if you still think there's gravity, it's electro, it's electric universe. There's so much to talk about. I'm going to just kind of summarize this nutshell in case you want to build your own UFO. You're just interested in the science of this. It's pretty cool. You got the resonant cavities here that as the electrons are traveling through some of the, these could be microwave emitters it could be diodes that compress the sound and keep it from overheating keeping it a superconductor or resonating with the sound or what uh, not the sound but the electricity traveling through it a superconductor then 
in a nutshell. So here's the whole craft. These things, this rotates, this rotates. This entire outer diagram, you know what this thing misses? It misses an animation, right? So you can imagine this thing generating these waves that are fluctuating off this, creating the first wave, this one creating a second wave, propagating and multiplying through this wave, through the plasma, creating uh, gravity waves to a magnitude of, let me find that spot on there. And I'm going to touch on one quick topic. It is important to note that the simple dimensional analysis shows that there is a factor missing in equation four, which I didn't show, written in the Jason report, which I didn't show, because there's a lot to this document, and I already spent 23 minutes on this. That admitting the fact that it still show that high frequency, high energy electromagnetic field generator we can produce high frequency grave <laughs> gravity waves exhibiting power exhi exhibiting power levels at the order of 10 to the 100 to the 10th power which is basically 100 billion watts <laughs> on the order oh man a magnetic flux density in the order of 10 to the 10 teslas and which produces i know people don't even know what that is so i had to get on that uh given it gravitons but i did find it interesting if you're still watching you really want to pay attention to here okay if you're into cern world destruction and how crazy science can get and uh even the bible says you know if the lord didn't stop it it would have just to self-destroy everybody would have been killed this may be it <laughs> okay the implications of colliding and focusing uh, colliding and focusing High frequency gravity waves generated by rapidly accelerated vibration spin of electrically charged systems, which we just showed you, can be used in applications of propulsion as well as extreme disruption of planetary bodies. If so desired, it can be shown that the that the level energy level gain, which amplified right potential energy capable of of annihilating a planet such as the earth on the order of 10 to 32 power joules i don't even know what that number is but that's crazy 10 to the 30 that's 10 with 32 zeros or actually one with 32 zeros i don't even know what that is way past any number i can pronounce way past trillion gajillion right it's out there are you guys paying attention because i hope so capable of heliating a planet such as the earth on the order of 10 to the 32nd joule? Are you kidding me? I hope you've been watching this far because that is an eye-opener and the U.S. has a patent for it. And they made it available for me to read it to you. Wow. So, the emitted high-frequency high gravity wave would impinge on each other in such a manner to severely disrupt vacuum energy in a state of space-time locally denoted a point of impact collision of gravitons with gravitons. It's just waves. I don't believe in gravity. It's magnetic propulsion. Gravity is a theory. <sighs> but check this out. Be amplified to such a degree to generate a space-time curvature singularity to a, leading to a total destruction of the planetary body or planetoid which can be an asteroid or comet impact trajectory with earth wow i want to do more on this with the space force in my next video i hope you were watching if not i just gotta watch it again show this to your friends please copy like and share this video have a blessed day